Hey y'all. So this round of videos is going to be for the entire month of September as opposed to the usual bi-monthly format because by the time you see these I will be off having a very particular sort of adventure. If you want to hear a little bit more about what that could possibly be, I will be posting a This Is Me update which is my series about my own personal lifetimes and shenanigans. The title of that video will be This Is Me, Bon Voyage. So take a look if you are curious. And then for October, we'll be back to the bi-monthly format. And you'll also have your couple month ahead, Mabin and Samhain for September, October ahead videos coming at you as well in September. So enjoy. Hey Pisceans, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your September general reading here. So in your meditation, I'm short but sweet, I saw the image of a Norwal, which energetically, like a Norwal in the ocean, that's where it would be, um, it's in, kind of like a blender, hybrid energy between the, because Norwals, if you don't know, are like very large whale looking creatures with like a sword on the end of their nose, kind of like a unicorn's horn. Um, or like a swordfish nose, but it's it comes out of the center of their forehead like a unicorn. So it felt like a hybrid between whale energy and unicorn energy. Now, I have for you guys always associated you with unicorns. You guys embody that energy when you're in alignment in such a beautiful, beautiful, strong way. So whale energy is, I, I also, you guys embody whale energy really well in the sense that, of course, you are water signs, deeply intuitive. However, whales are, uh, connects with like a queen of cups, where if you feel things very, very deeply, I think just about every Pisces I've ever met has been an empath, um, and not if, if not an empath, then highly empathic, right? Uh, which means you feel other people's feelings as your own. You, you, your primary sense of getting information, intuitive guidance, impressions about people is how you feel about them or how you feel about an offer, how you feel about something, right? Uh, it's your core energetic, you know, signature is, is your feelings. So that is the whale energy. It also has to do with music and, and the healing power of that and, and using sound um, as a healing tool or as a sense of a uh, a form of expression. Then we have unicorn with that Norwal, you know, horn, I believe it would be called, um, part, which is about, you know, artistic expression, gifted children, uh, innocence, and kind of equates to the judgment key, which is about appreciating every aspect of your experience from a place of non judgment and acceptance, right? Then I saw the Norwal kind of move into a classroom. And it was like in a classroom with a bunch of kids and there was a teacher at like a chalkboard. It felt like an old timey classroom, kind of like from a show that I only saw like once or twice, but I don't know why it, it comes up for me in this context, but it's a show called When Calls the Heart on Hallmark. I think it's a Canadian show. Um, I literally saw it once or twice and yet this classroom always really stuck with me for some reason. Anyway, I saw that kind of classroom and, um, I saw a teacher, you know, writing stuff on the chalkboard. And then I saw you guys as a Pisces collective kind of leaning up against a stack of books as a child and feeling very comfortable and exactly where you're meant to be. And, you know, since I get from that is that there's a lot of comfort and you may feel differently, but just hear me out here. There is a lot of comfort that can come from being in school because think about it. Everything is planned out for you. You have a syllabus. You know exactly what's going to happen. You know what the lesson plan is for the year. You know when the lunch, the lunch break is always at the exact same time. You know when your papers are due. You know when your you know tests are happening. You know when your time off is going to be. You have your reading material. Everything is set for you, right? Everything is set. You're also learning information, so it takes the pro the pressure off of actually jumping into action and, and finding a job or doing something for yourself. Like, go make it happen. Take what you've learned and apply it. And, and that's really interesting because along with that unicorn energy, which speaks of childhood or children, right? It really does feel like you're in a beautiful aspect during this time of gathering information, relearning or learning or reconsidering something. You could even be like acquiring a new skill or, or learning about something new or looking into something, but it feels like such a comforting place to be. 
it really, really it feels emotionally nurturing for you um, and highly positive. And I feel like there's a special shout out to any teachers as well. Um, but yeah, it's really beautiful. It just feels warm and, and uh, just very comforting, very nurturing. Like, you know, having that PB&J at lunch break before nap time, right? It's, it's that beautiful where you just get to learn about really interesting things as well. It's really, really nice. So yeah, let's go ahead and see what your cards say. Hey, Pisceans, let's go ahead and see what your animal energy is for the month of September. Oh, oh so good. Okay, let's talk. So we got the peacock here. Now, this technically is air energy, but it's also water energy because the peacock equates, oh, can you see that? Sorry. <laughs> the peacock equates to that of the king of cups in the tarot. So we were talking about the Queen of Cups with the Whale and that watery energy. King of Cups is about emotional balance, emotional equilibrium, emotional intelligence. The Peacock Medicine, see those eyes there on the feathers? That represents clairvoyance and seeing things clearly. And then we have the King of Cups who feels things clearly. So clairsentience coming in. Now, Peacock Medicine is very much about beauty, but not in the way that you think. Because while they are externally beautiful, they represent internal beauty internal beauty which is so amazing and perfect with what we're picking up on in terms of those feelings of nurturing and comfort peacock also encourages us to allow ourselves to be seen stepping into the spotlight being appreciated for who and what we are on a very authentic level so i like i like very much that that's coming up for you very much Let's see what's going on, Pisces. What's going on? Oh man, this has come up quite a bit. Okay, so here we have the Five of Pentacles. Now let's talk. First of all, five is the number of change, right? And the Five of Pentacles is about feeling afraid or fearful, about being apart from someone you want to be with, feeling apart from where you want to be or feeling like you're not always gonna have what you need, right? It's that fear that hits the root chakra that says, I'm not gonna have what I need. I'm not gonna be okay. Now, what's really interesting with this as well is that this is a frog leading Alice away. Now, why this is fascinating is because frog medicine is about emotional detoxification. Remember we were just talking about that sense of emotional comfort and what feels good? Now, what I'm getting from this, because it is in the primary or past position, the energy that you're coming into the month with, I do feel like there's this certain aspect of some shifts being made in your environment, right? They could have to do with your physical experience, your health, your home, your, your work, your money matters, whatever it is. But I do feel like there are some shifts happening there, even to people around you that affect you, like someone moving away or someone, the, the, something, right? But there are aspects of this that feel like while it does, it is pentacles and it, it equates to like physical matters, there's an emotional aspect with this frog here, right? And, and with the peacock, which is about emotional balance and equilibrium, it feels like you are moving into an emotional place that feels a lot more nurtured, calm, and balanced, which is really, really good. Really, really good. Let's see what else is going on. Right. So here we have the Hermit, beautiful Virgo energy. So the first part of September up until the 21st at the Autumnal Equinox, we're in Virgo season, honey. So this is beautiful for you to have this energy that you're working with on a collective scale. So energetically, the Hermit is about going inside of yourself, spending some time on your own, and really asking yourself those deep philosophical questions, searching for enlightenment, searching for answers, considering things. Which is really interesting, considering that we have that energy of judgment come in with the unicorn. You know, also, this is definitely like a horse with a bell on its head. So I feel like it's a little bit of a nod to that Norwal or the unicorn of the seas. <laughs> I don't know if anybody calls it that, but I feel like I just did. So, you know, there's this energy of the Hermit as well that it's like, you know, it kind of equates it to elephant medicine where it's like a gentle remover of obstacles. And traditionally speaking, the hermit is holding a lantern, right? In the traditional, the Rider Waite Coleman tarot. 
is holding a lantern and the light in that lantern is the star from the star key which is aquarius energy right which which is um kind of a flip side of virgo energy as well so i feel like there's a part of you during this time that's really being called to sit with what comes up for you around your fears of separation or lack and then also really considering where you are and what choices that you've made that have that have led to where you are right now what's really cool about this is that it feels like it's done in a really positive construct constructive um you know meant to be sort of way in divine timing sort of way because in your meditation i saw you in a classroom learning information the hermit is all about learning information learning information about himself learning information about the world why life exists why the universe works how it works why is there war why is there famine why are there viruses why is love what is love why are there you know horses and unicorns and were there ever unicorns it's all of those deep questions that really let i don't know if that's a deep question maybe it is been all of you is but but really asking those deep philosophical questions for the sake of learning and then we have you in that position of the classroom right very interesting. Let's see what else is going on. Right. Pisces. Okay. Before we talk about this, th something that's hitting me is that we have water with fire, or water with air. We have earth. We have more earth, but a major arcana. And then we have fire. I'm just going to say it. This feels a bit all over the place. And I say that with love. But this feels a bit all over the place. And I feel like the information in that is that you are really being called to, to step up out of the higher, I would say, link into, tap into the higher perspective and see the perfection in your experience, even when and as it feels all over the place. Do you remember that meditation where you were in school and everything was kind of decided for you and you had everything planned out and scheduled? It feels like there's a part of you that is really desiring that to be your reality during this time, but instead it's a bit all over the place. But what you bring to it, you can gift yourself the warmth of that favorite teacher and snack time and learning and you can create that environment with and for yourself but it is something that's going to need to be mindfully done by you which may mean turning your phone off at a certain hour of the night not checking you know messages or emails or work and setting boundaries with yourself just like a good teacher would in a classroom and say no snack time is for snack time and now we're doing maths or, or whatever it is. But I'm hearing to, to really take that into consideration. Now, the king of wands, traditionally speaking, it, wands are about the actions that we do or don't take, usually around the work that we love to do, but really about the things that of which we're passionate, right? It's all about the fire. So the king of wands is a master, an absolute professional at knowing when to move, when to be still, what to say yes to, what to say no to, and really looking at things from the vantage point with that feathered snake up there, with that vantage point of what's in my best interest at this time, what can wait, what's important now, which is really interesting because in that context, he's a master of fear, the anti-fear king, right? He doesn't know fear. This is the aspect of the emperor, right? Because all the kings are, are the emperor just in different outfits. So this is the aspect of the emperor as the king of wands that says, I don't rush. I, I, I don't rush. I, I take my time. I move at a pace that feels natural to me in the moment. And that feels incredibly important for you as well. You know, the quickest way that we knock ourselves out of alignment is to rush, or to make fear-based choices, right? I'm going to take the first one I see because I just want to get it done and I don't want to be without something, right? But it's like, mm, let, let's really click into our instinct and really trust that if it's ours, it's not going to pass us by. If it's ours, we're not going to move out, miss out on it. But at the same time, stay connected to your fire. Stay connected to your emotional equilibrium and your knowing and your intuition and your clairsentience. Stay connected, Right? So that when it is time to move on something, or it is an opportunity to say yes to something that's beneficial for you, that you heed that call as well. And, and that's the true balance of it, right? But I would say more than anything, Pisces, definitely take some care to nurture. Take some care to, um, to, to really look at how you delegate your time as well. I'm hearing, I'm hearing writing and journaling can be especially helpful, helpful for you as well. Okay, Ooh, let's get some advice. Let's get some advice. Advice for Pisces. 
Right. Okay. We got the tower here for your advice. So this makes sense. So the tower is a big change. It's a sudden shock. It's, it's you know, something coming up to shift in your road and your experience. Now, we did talk about change with the number of five here, right? When the tower is your advice, and I said it feels all over the place. It, it, it kind of does. But when the tower is your advice, you're being asked to go with the flow, to accept, allow, and not resist the path. OK, the more that you can do that, the more that you'll be in alignment, which is really interesting, because remember how I just said the the way that we knock ourselves out of alignment the most quickly is to rush. In my opinion, in my experience, tower moments occur when we are knocked out of alignment and tower moments come in to reposition us on our path and in alignment. It just usually has to happen a bit dramatically because we've and usually because we or others around us have made more fear-based choices out of love-based choices. So I'm hearing embrace the changes because it's aligning you in ways that you're going to be very happy about later. But again, I keep going back to that aspect of, well, first of all, lightning is fire, and then we have the water as well. I keep going back to that aspect of the classroom and the taking in the information and learning. And I feel like that's going to be very helpful for you as well, especially with assuming this hermit position. It does feel like you're balancing a couple of things with this king of wands and the feathered snake on his nose. I do feel like there are aspects of your experience that are coming in and you can go, okay, this is a learning opportunity. And I feel like if you can look at things through that scope of a learning opportunity and an opportunity to grow, then it's going to be all the more positive and constructive for you. And you're ending with the King of Wands. You're ending on a high note and you have the beautiful influence and glow of the peacock around you. But there are certain aspects of your experience and within you that are coming up for realignment. Okay? Let's get an oracle. Oh, perfect. Okay. So here we have the Ice Queen. Ideas preserved non-action entitlement. This is brilliant because, first of all, we're talking about nap time. Also, you are indicated by the moon key in the tarot. Then we have the moon here with the owl. So uh, owl is high priestess energy, which is about staying connected to your intuition, which we already talked about. But it also equates to that of the ten of cups energy, water energy like you, which speaks of emotional, complete emotional fulfillment, happy home and family that only exists on the other side of you staying connected your intuition and your feelings, right? So ideas preserve non-action entitlement. This is saying everything in its own timing. Do not rush. Do not feel the need to make things happen. Allow yourself to be in school. Take that information in. Allow things to unfold naturally while nurturing yourself and taking care of yourself. Now is not the time for you to be at the driving, at the steering wheel, making things happen and, and, and trying to control any aspect of your experience. There is an aspect of this that says you are the hermit and while ideally you're in the driver's seat and an aspect of you is, this feels a bit more like it would be in your best interest to stand on the side of the road and observe from a safe distance, okay? And I don't mean that to be like overly dramatic, but there are things being reshifted for you. Things, parts are being moved about. And if you stand in the middle of it and try to control the timing or the way in which that happens, you will only get in the way and prolong the process, okay? The great part about the Ice Queen is that this says you deserve to take a rest. You deserve to take another position. You deserve to be the hermit and go into the woods and take this time with and for yourself. You absolutely deserve it, and it's going to benefit you going forward because things will pick up again, and you'll, again, be in the position to, to attract and make things happen and go for it and all of those things. But ultimately, September is a time of massive changes and shifts for you, what you stand to gain out of it for your highest and best good. You, these are your two tower moments, the hermit and the tower, is that on the other side of this, you're going to be realigned and repositioned where you were able to manifest new things and experience a quality of life that is more aligned and attuned to your highest and best and love-based path. And that is rather the point, okay? I would also encourage you to look more into Norwals. Norwals, I feel like, is a beautiful totem for you during this time and a point of comfort as well. And then also remembering the peacock and knowing that, that part of that King of Cups emotional balance is allowing yourself to be seen authentically for who you are. And I would say within that, turning to those who are important to you, who love you and see you 
for who you are, for emotional support and connection as well. It makes all the difference. He goes into the woods feeling all right because he knows Alice is right there waiting for him when he comes out. You know what I mean? Whoops. <laughs> uh, with that being said, my beautiful Pisceans, I'm sending you so many blessings this September. I so hope that this helps and resonates. If so, please let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading your comments. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd so appreciate that. And if you would like to know a little bit more about what I am doing and why this is a monthly instead of a bi-monthly, please do feel free to check out my latest uh, installment of This Is Me, Bon Voyage, and to get all the tea on what is happening in my personal lifetimes and shenanigans. <laughs> and with that being said, just thank you as always. Thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate every single one of you watching this. And just as always, thank you for, for being you. Thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time. <laughs>